Hang on a minute, my <laughs> my voice is resonating my lights. <clears throat> right, let's uh, let, let's let's fill a glass. So this is a glass of Tia Maria. And I'm just gonna let's see if we can fill this with a bit of vape. There we go, lovely jubbly. Now we have a glass of of, of vapey Tia Maria. Yeah, very nice. So what time is it? Let me know what the fucking time is it in your country? Because right now in the UK. It is uh, 10.25, we're going to start looking at some old school Hyphonics amplifiers that use the HIP4080 chip and these are slightly, well, so can be more difficult to repair so I thought this would be a good live stream to do. Oh wow, it's 4.25 p.m. <laughs> what the fuck? See, that is mind blowing to me because like to think that somewhere else somebody is sitting there watching this in the afternoon at 4 25 p.m that's crazy to me because it's like flipping half 10 in the evening here they, you know it's night time it's time for bed it's time to go to sleep in finland yes my friend so uh, i'm sorry if i pronounce this your name wrong where are we a to isola i <laughs> <laughs> Timothy says I hate those amps. Yeah, I used to hate these amps until until I read Perry's guide on these amplifiers because I was like what the fuck these amplifiers are a massive nightmare if you don't know what you're doing but if you read Perry's guide he tells you exactly how to fix these amps and the beautiful thing about these amplifiers is most of the actual amplifiers drive circuit is in the fucking chip. It's in the chip. Excuse the the the, the, the bicycle parking at the back here. How the flipping floppity flip loop 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 voltage regulation regulation for the nation and yeah apart from that it's pretty easy to repair whenever i think of argentina i just remember that song don't cry for me argentina like that's that's I, I, pff, polite jesse is usually very polite on the live streams uh, actually jesse usually um watches my live streams in the shadows so like i'll be doing like a fucking six hour live stream on a big fucking amplifier and um jesse will have said oh hi like right at the start like in the first 10 minutes and then nothing for like six hours and then when i'm about to lock off the stream i'm like yeah thanks guys this repair was good we fixed it blah blah, blah. six hours later jesse will be like thanks for the stream bye and i'm like holy fuck jesse you've been watching this for six hours and yet, like i didn't even know you were still here like flipping hell oh now you see i would like to, i would love to visit jamaica one of my good friends actually who's in the audio scene he is he's like a, a really typical big fat white guy you know he's like a he's like a big white guy with a bit of a, he's a bald head like me and he's got a bit of a beard and you know he's a really smiley guy and he runs a vape shop uh, he's he makes his own vape juice and but but all of his friends are all Jamaican and kind of um, so he competes in sound clash so all the audio stuff that he does is all about parking up in a big open space lots of sunshine lots of jerk chicken barbecue and they play lots of reggae music and lots of um, lots of uh, what do you call it um, what's the reggae songs that have your name in them Bumbakla. I can't remember the name of that thing Oh, dub plate! Dub plate is the word that I was looking for. Yes, repairing stuff, and you're basically giving people enjoyment because they bring you an amplifier. And the thing is, with bass, people love bass. It's a massive enjoyment thing. It's a, it's a kind of thing that people go out, and you can just go out for a drive. Like if if it's a weekend and you've not got much on, and you're feeling a bit stressed, people that have bass and that love bass just go out for a drive and play the music they love and turn the bass up high and it gives you stress relief it's a great feeling and it's a really lovely thing to do just drive to nowhere get lost fuck it play some music and for people that have blown amplifiers you can't do that anymore so for me to be able to repair that amplifier and give them back that good feeling of stress relief and go out to be able to bass is something that i love doing it's giving back to people is making people feel happy so that's what i love doing I am chatting so much shit right now. The bass hits and it's smooth and deep and it it makes you feel things. It gives you fucking goosebumps. I totally get that. This this is fucked. Um, we are down at the bottom of the live chat. So now I can get started on this amplifier finally. Now, this amplifier came into the workshop with, with a blown 
power supply section and output section. So we've got two sides of the amplifier to deal with. Now, the power supply section is very simple. If you've been watching my channel for like anything longer than a week now, you should know exactly how to replace or to repair the power supply section. So we're gonna start off with the power supply section repair. We are, we are, so already on this amplifier, I've already removed all the FETs. So we have no power supply FETs in the board and we have no output FETs in the board. So because I have no um, FETs in the board, what I can do is I can actually apply some remote power to this amplifier and we can read with our oscilloscope the drive waves on the gates of the power supply section to make sure that the power supply section drive circuit is working correctly, correctly. So let's see, let's give this thing some power and I think I want to give this about, yeah, uh, let's see, 10 volts is about right. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and probe the power supply drive circuit. And this is using 47 ohm gate resistors. So let's put the remote on and let's see. What do we have on the gates? Ooh -hoo -hoo! A nice, sexy looking square wave. So that looks quite nice. So the amplifier is currently drawing zero amps, which is lovely. That means that there are unlikely to be any leaking uh, drive transistors because if there was it would draw a bit more current than that. So I'm going to go ahead and just check each of these drive pads. So we've got gate number one looks good, gate number two looks good, three looks like this, and four looks like this, and five and six. Okay, good, good, good. Let's go over to the other side of the amplifier. That looks sexy as fuck. Yep, I would definitely take that on a date. I would buy that some dinner and some cocktails. I would probably take that driveway back home and show it my workshop. Uh, yeah, so that looks very, very nice indeed. So we have a very sexy looking drive wave across the whole of the power supply section. So because we have good drive waves, we are very, very much safe to go ahead and fit some new FETs. So we're going to go ahead and fit some 3205s in this little kinky drawer here. So let's get our 3205s and I'm not going to replace all of them just yet because I'm going to just, I, it's, it's, you know, that's going to take too long. So. I'm going to replace, I'm going to fit one per bank. So this amplifier has two transformers. And because it has two transformers, we know that we need four banks. Yeah? So each transformer needs a push and a pull. So if we've got two transformers, that means we have a push for this one and a pull for this one. And a push for this one and a pull for this one. So we need four FETs in the amplifier to make it work. So let's go ahead and fit FET number one. Fit vet number two. Bloop bloop. Bloop bloop. Bloop bloop. Now before before I actually apply the power, let's make sure the gate resistor survived. So in order to make sure the gate resistor survived, take our multimeter, diode beep setting, and measure the gate resistance. We should have 47 ohms, which we do. And on this one we should also have 47 ohms, which we do. And on this one we should also have 47 ohms, which we do. And on this one we do have 47 ohms, which we do. We do, I think. No, what the fuck? Ah, uh, yes, other side. Whoops. Yes, we do. So we have 47 ohms on all the gates of those transistors, those MOSFETs that I've just fitted. So that's good. So we are, whoops, we are now safe to go ahead and power this baby up. So let's give this thing some power again and take our multimeter probe, our multimeter, our scope probe even. And let's make sure the thing turns on. So, oh yeah, look at that. Sexy, sexy, sexy. So, we got a nice drive wave there, and the amplifier is drawing 1.3 amps, which is a little bit high, possibly, considering this amplifier has no output FETs in. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the HIP4080 chip for a second. Now, this is in headers, which is very handy. So, I can just go ahead and I should be able to just, yeah, there we go, pull the chip out the board, like so. Put that to one side, and now let's see how much current it draws without the fit without the chip in. Okay, so we're now down at one one amp. So the chip being in the board draws 0.2 amps, which is not that much. That's actually pretty good. So I, I reckon the chip might be okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to measure the areas around this circuit to see whether it's actually working or not. And uh, to do that, I need to use my zoom in camera. So 
Now, let's look at the HIP 4080 area. And in order to work out what's going on with the HIP 4080, let's take a look at our Google Chrome and let's have a look at our Perry's Guide. La Perry's Guide. It's like the flipping Bible of amplifier repair. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at um, some Class D. Here we go. Um, basic Class D amplifier troubleshooting. So I think this is the page that has all the information on the HIP 4080. Here we go. So here we go. This, this is a picture of the HIP 4080. So this will tell us what we should have on each of the HIP 4080 pins. Um, okay, here we go. Pin layout. I think this is correct for the... Uh, is this the... Yeah, here we go. HIP 4080 H bridge drive IC. It is common for these ICs to fail. They almost always fail when the outputs fail, but they often fail alone and can cause various problems. One is excessive current draw. It is common practice to pull these ICs and eliminate the excessive current draw. In most H of the amplifier, most of the 48 based amplifiers, this presents no problems because there are 47k or 100k or just connected across the gate and the source of the output transistors that keeps the output transistors off so that they cannot conduct any current. For amplifiers that with the ball and fucking bullshit. Anyway, so let's have a look what these pins need to be. Um, reading so basic pin layout pin one is the BHP uh, BHB B channel high side bootstrap this pin is the bias input for the high side so we're not going to see anything on that pin without the fence in pin two is the H the hen cluck, 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 cluck. the hen is the high side enable this pin controls the output of the high side fence um, so this pin must be high for the IC to produce output so let's see let's start at pin number two then since we're not going to see anything on pin number one so let's start at pin number two and to work out which pin is number two I'm going to have a look at the board again just here and let's just hover this chip so pin number two is going to be this one so this is pin number two so what do we have on pin number two when we apply power to the amplifier Okay, that looks high to me. So you can see that that is at 11.3 volts. So that's high. Yeah, so there's voltage on it, which means that it is high. So that's a good. That's a good, good, good. Cluck, cluck, cluck. And so, yeah, this pin must be high. If the manufacturer, blah, 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 blah. Right, pin three is disabled. This pin shuts down the IC when this output is high, when it's slowed up. So pin three needs to be low. So in order for pin three to, for the, for the chip to work, Pin 3 needs to be low. So let's have a look. Is pin 3 low? Yes, pin 3 is low. We have negative 1 volts, which is low as fuck. So that's good. Okay, next one. Pin number 4. Pin number 4 is ground. So pin number 4 should be ground, so that shouldn't be anything at all. Looking at the... Uh, yeah, that's nothing at all. That's just nothing. So that's good. Pin number five, out. Oh, this is the output of the input comparator. If pin six is higher than pin seven, this pin is higher. Oh, okay, so this pin number five works in the same way as pin number three of the TL494. So if pin five is high, as it reads here, then pin six is lower than pin seven. For repair work, you should simply want to make sure that there is a square wave signal here when the amplifier is on. Whenever there is an audio signal present, you will see it modulated in the square wave on this pin. If there is no square wave signal on this pin, or the square wave isn't modulated when, uh, the, the, when the amplifier is driven with audio signal, then you need to find out why. You might, in fact, need the amplifier, the amplifier to have the 4080 chip present in order for there to be a square wave on there. Pin 6 in. This is the positive input of the input comparator. This will be a triangle waveform oscillator signal here. You should have approximately 6 volts on this and pin 7. So looking at my oscilloscope here, we actually have 7.22 volts RMS, which is about right based on what Perry's guide is saying. So that looks about good to me. <coughs> Alright. Let's move on to pin number seven. This is the negative input of the comparator. This is like to be reference voltage, blah, blah, blah. blah, 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 blah. Uh, when the amp is driven, the amplifier this year distorted audio signal. So we can actually see what's going on. We have an audio signal here. So that looks to be correct as well. Okay, fantastic. Pin number eight. High side delay. This terminal controls the turn on delay for the high side transistors. Uh, that's probably not going to be very interesting. So I turn the amplifier off and turn it back on. Is it going to do anything? Nothing happens, so that's probably nothing. Uh, that probably only works with the chip installed. So pin number nine. 
low side delay. This terminal has the same basic function as the one above, except it controls the delay of the low side transistors. Okay, that's fine. And number 10 is the AHP, AHP, A channel high side bootstrap. So that won't do anything because the amplifier is not in operation. Pin number 11. So we're going to jump up to pin number 11 just now. High side output. So there's going to be nothing on that because there's no chip installed. AHS, high, high side channel source. It's 7 volts. Ah, yes, because I believe the high side of this amplifier is driven by a sine wave, which should be about 6 volts. So that's actually, I think that's correct. Uh, A, L, O, hello, 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 my friend. How are you doing, my friend? A channel low side output. So that's going to be nothing. Uh, pin 15 is VCC. Now, this is one of the 12 volt inputs for the IC. So this pin 15 should be VCC, so this should be 12 volts. Yes, we have 12 volts on the VCC, so that's correct. Great stuff. So that's the VCC is working, so the chip will get power. That's good. Uh, pin number 16, VDD. See above pin 15 and 16 are connected together, so that's fine. That should also be, yeah, that is. Uh, pin 17, P channel low side source. So the low side source, let's see what we've got on there. That's zero volts because that's the low side. Uh, out output okay so so far all of the pins look pretty much like they are going to be good this is the original chip that came with the amplifier so i'm going to load this back into the amplifier now that we've gone through and checked all the all the pins on the 4080 i'm going to go ahead and shove this back into the amplifier and turn it back on with an rca signal present we've got some uh, sine waves going into the amplifier and we're going to see, make sure that we have good drive waves on all of the gates of these FETs. So, without further ado, let's slippery slide uh, the chip back into the slot. Ski up, like so. And now let's turn the amplifier back on and let's probe some of those probing probes. Let's probe some of these things. So, so we have 1.2 amps worth of current draw. Now, on the gates, we should see, aha, here we go. We have some square waves. Now, if I remove the remote, ah, here we go. If I remove the, um, the RCA signal here, we can see that we have a square wave here which rides along 7 volts, roughly. I wonder if that's correct. So that's interesting. I'm just going to make sure that that's the same on all of these. So that's okay. So we, yeah, we have probably what's like the high side versus the low side. It's now getting oh, it's getting lower and lower in duty cycle. Can you see that? It's and now it's going to nothing. So if I plug the RCAs back in, so the duty cycle keeps changing. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's try the other side. The gates on the other side. Make sure that that's the same. Ah, interesting. The other side doesn't actually have any gate drive. That's interesting. So we have no gate drive on the other side of the amplifier. So I wonder whether that is an issue with the chip. Luckily, because I'm badass, I have loads and loads of these HI, uh, HIP4080 chips spare. So let's remove the original chip. Put that to one side and let's compare what we see with a new chip. So we're going to take a new uh, a new half bridge chip here. I've got a bunch of these. Let's slide her into the board once again. So let's see, should we have drive waves on both sides of the amplifier? And is the fact that we didn't an issue? So turn it back on. Ah, look, now we're only drawing one amp. So this we're drawing less current now with a new chip install. And and we have drive waves on both sides of the amplifiers. So if you are curious as to whether you should have drive waves on both sides of these amplifiers, you should indeed have the same drive on both sides of these amplifiers. So if you don't have the same drive on both sides, then your HIP4080 chip is flipping stank. Stanky, stanky, stanky. So we're going to put our stanky, stanky, stanky HIP4080 chip in the sand castle. Okay, cool. So now that we have good looking drive on all of these, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that the gate resistors are all looking good. I think they're 47 ohms still. So the gate resistors are 100 ohms. 100. 100 ohms. Yep, looks good to me on this side. And let's check this side. We need 100 ohms. 
So the 100 ohms gate resistor actually feeds three FETs. So rather than each FET having its own gate resistor, we have three FETs share the same gate resistor. So now that we have good drive and we are ready to now fit some replacement FETs. Now this amplifier actually came, the original FETs in this amplifier were IRF3710. So let's fit these parts and make sure that it is working good. Good. Oh crap, I dropped my vape on the floor. And we're gonna fit one of these fets to the high side. Maybe I'll do the live stream in this voice from now on. This exact amp is my arch nemesis lol. When I first started amp repair, I tried taking one and could not get it right LMAO. All oh, good times, says Tony Baker. If you don't know what you're doing, or if you do not have Perry's guide. And I support the funny voice says Ghetto Stereo. Okay, maybe we do the rest of the live stream in the stupid voice. And probably tomorrow I wake up with a sore throat. Seth does not like the stupid voice. So the fans are fitted to the amplifier now. And now we put some power and see if it's going to catch the fire. If it's going to blow up, blow up. Is it going to blow up or is it going to work? Very nice. Muy bien. And I hope it doesn't explode because I don't have enough fats remaining to repair this if these ones go poof on the amplifier. Um, that looks interesting. Um, I don't think it's liking that very much. Excuse me. So in the drive wave on this side looks pretty good. You can see the drive wave is like okay. Yeah, nice and nice and square on this side. But on the other side the drive wave is like what the fuck? It's some weird some bullshit going on. Um no 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 that's not good. Ah fuck what <laughs> Ah Holy shit this fat is stanky hot that's a fucking really hot. If I put in the thermal imager, you can see on the thermal imager, this fet is like fucking really hot. So that's not good. So the fet that gets hot is this one here. Really stanky hot. And this is good because it means that I can teach you how to repair these properly. Let's compare readings. So let's take our multimeter and put it backwards so you guys can read this on the live stream. Okay, now. If I put my multimeter probes between this FET, which is staying cool, we have 172 ohms between gate and source. On this one, we have 634 ohms. Well, no, that's diode setting, so that doesn't count. Right, this side, we have 634, which is the same. And this side, we have, aha! Okay, that, my friends, is our problem. So, one way round, it's 356. And the other way round, it is... 1680-something. 16... 16, yeah, 16-something, uh, 16 right. So, let's confirm. This side... So, this should be down at 300, but it's not. It's up at, like, 15. And the opposite way round... It's completely infinite. So I reckon the issue is actually on the source. So we already confirmed that this FET has 100 ohms to the gate. So the gate is pin one. So if we confirm the gate drive to this one, you can see here that we have 100 ohms to the gate, but the source, I reckon the source isn't connected properly. So if we go over to the source of, so if we check a good FET, so the source of this FET over here, which is good, this should have a continuity to the uh, IC somewhere. So continuity to pin 12 should be on the source, which there isn't continuity on this one. So that's our problem. So let's see, what is the source connected to? There should be a resistor or something that's connected to the source. I wonder if I can zoom in on this. So the source over here, we should have a resistor connected to that. So let's confirm. Actually, let's confirm the good side first. So the good side is over here. 
It's not connected to any of these. It's not connected to this. It's probably connected to one of these big green ones somewhere. Or maybe it's connected to one nearer to this section here. Because we've got, you can see here, we've got like two ohms. On the multimeter, there's two ohms between the source and this pin. And if we touch our probes together, we have, oh, it's going to be like one ohm. So if I just shift this around a bit, right. So that's zero ohms. So between the source and here, we have like one ohm. So there's going to be a one ohm resistor somewhere that's connecting the source. Okay, I reckon it's these, these big green ones over here. So these big green ones are probably the source resistors. So this is measuring as 1 ohm. That's good. This one's measuring as 1 ohm, which is good. This one's measuring as 1... Uh, ah, this one's measuring as 10 ohms. That one's measuring as 10 ohms. That one's measuring as 1. So we've got 1, 1, 10... Aha! This one is open! I love it when we find the issue. Right. You see this? This is a 1 ohm resistor, as you can see on the screen up in the top right hand corner. This resistor is the same. So this should also be a 1 ohm resistor, but it's not. As you can see, this is measuring as completely open. We have nothing on the multimeter apart from some really high numbers. So, therefore, the issue with this FET over here is because we have an open resistor here, which is the source resistor. So, let's go right goddamn ahead and change that resistor. And we can actually see on the board here, you can see that this has got really hot. Because you see how the board is actually discoloured around this area? It's like a darker greeny colour. And that shows that some heat has definitely been apparent on the board here. So we need to go ahead and remove that resistor because it is blown. Ah, here we go. Brown, black, gold, gold. I've got some blue ones. Here we go. That, 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 that's good. That's a good job. Where are you now that I need ya? Do 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 it's dressing me out that there's food on a blanket. Okay, uh, let's flip him, flip him, flip her back over again with the new one ohm resistor in place. Take our scoping scope probe, probe him, probe, and get this camera back on the power supply. We sh this one shouldn't get hot anymore, and it should just be nice and tasty. Ah shit! I've now got like excessive current draw from somewhere. 2 point, well, 2 point something, 2.3 amps. That's quite a lot of amps. So we've got 4 volts on this side. Okay, something is going to be getting hot. Okay, <laughs> whoo! Power supply gets hot as fuck. And it's this side of the power supply that gets hot. Right, so why is that side of the power supply not happy? We have a difference actually on, on this side, we have a difference. Um, on this side of the outputs we were reaching 4, vo four volts on, the, on the, the drain of this FET, but on this FET we were reaching nothing, zero. I'm going to see whether removing the FETs gets rid of that current draw and heating on the power supply. Ah, okay, I've got a short circuit on this side, I've got a solder bridge or something. There's some short circuit over here. Right, but the short isn't on the back of the board. It's not on... Right, okay, so we've got a short circuit somewhere on this side, which is causing that to heat up. So you can see there we've got a short circuit between the drain and source. I reckon that there is other issues around this area. Aha! Aha! Mwaha! Again, we found the problem. So, process of elimination. So here this this is the area where we so we've replaced the one ohm resistor uh, resistor here that was dead right right next to it there is a diode here i don't know what the fuck that does but this is shorted because if we place our multimeter across the diode it reads a direct short so i reckon that that diode is also shorted so that's something else to look for when you're looking at these amplifiers so let's go ahead and remove that diode and see if the short circuit goes away Yes! Yes! 
The diode is dead! Yes! Right, okay, so that's our problem then. This diode is fucked. So what is this diode in fact? This diode is a P6KE68A. Right, what the other? I have no idea what the fuck that is. So, um, yeah, let's take a, a look uh, at our Google and let's type in. Okay, here we go. So this is a transient voltage suppressor. Bevids, I love how you get excited when you find a problem. Yeah, it's... I, I love it. I'm a problem solver. It gives me great satisfaction when I find the issue. So that's good. Don't know about car amps, but usually you can leave out the TVs for testing. Just a protection device. All right. Well, if that's the case, then thank you very much to Pienov. Uh, let's test the amplifier then with this removed. But I will order another one of those for protection. Now, now that we've removed that stanky um, diode. Let's power the amplifier back on and make sure that we have lost the heavy current draw. Yeah, uh, we're still drawing 2.4 amps. The, this power supply transistor is still getting hot. Right. Okay. So let's look at let's look at look at the um, let's look at the scope cam. Right. So the power supply, all of the ones that are staying cold, look like this. Okay. La la la, la la la. La la la. Right, and the one that's getting hot looks like this. Massive big fuck off spike. The drive wave, I think, looks the same. Let, let's let's confirm the drive wave looks the same across the board. So the bad oh, ah okay, look here we go. The bad one looks like this with the drive, and the good one looks like yeah. Right, okay, I think we've got a power supply drive issue then. In that case. So, something with the drive. I'm sure I checked the drive and it all looked the same though earlier. Unless it's been damaged since. Okay. So with the uh, power supply FETs removed, how does she look? Okay, so we have a nice square on this one. Right, so the drive waves are all good. So it's obviously something on the output. Right, all the FETs are fine. We There's no issues with any of the FETs. Right, so let's put the FETs back. Right, okay, now let's, let's time to remove the rectifiers. That will tell me if the issue resides on the output section or in the power supply section. Okay, rectifiers have been removed. So let's flip around and turn it back on and see if the power supply still looks stanky or whether it looks okay now. If it looks okay now, then the issue is in the output section. If it looks still bad, then the issue is in the power supply section. Okay, so the power supply still looks bad, so the issue is in the power supply section. So this side is working beautifully. So we have a power supply drive wave that looks like this. So it's quickly on and quickly off with a small little dip there. On the other side, one of the FETs looks like this with a slopey turn off. So I reckon that might be a pull down of some sort. And the other one looks like this. Uh -uh. Right. So I'm wondering whether that's actually power supply drive transistors that have given up. So I'm probably going to go ahead and the first port of call is to replace all of the power supply drive transistors because they are usually the first culprit to cause issues like this. Start our scope up again. Hit the uh, hit the on button. Yay! Woohoo! We're only drawing 0.9 amps now and the drive waves look phenomenal! Excellent stuff! Okay, right, I think that calls for a drink, so be back in two secs. I'm just gonna go and get a bottle of Tia Maria. Yeah, so I've got some Tia Maria and I've also got some Goldschlager, which is kind of a cinnamon snaps and it's got uh, actual real gold flakes inside, which is pretty cool. Maybe I'll, this is 40% the gold schlager and the tia maria is like 28 percent uh, so i'll start with some tia maria see how we go so the tia maria is is that's all this, that's all i've got left in the tia maria so yeah it's in a wine glass because i was having wine earlier wouldn't usually drink tia maria out of this but yeah fuck it let's put our fets back in i that my plan in life is not to get to the point where i have an ex-wife Right, okay, let's see if this thing works then, with the uh, with the chip fitted, so we should see some Class D switching waves now. Alright, there we go. We have switching, and we're drawing 1.3 amps. Oops, I should probably turn my camera to the right view. Yeah, that looks nice. That looks nice. Uh, that looks a bit shit. But that's, a, that's the gate drive, that's okay. Yeah, nice, that looks pretty good. So, hopefully these aren't getting hot. 
Ah, yes, they're staying stone cold. Fantastical. Boom. Okay, fantastic. So, and if, it, if, if anyone ever visits the UK and wants to come and chill in the workshop and maybe do a repair together, if you're ever in the UK, give me a shout. By all means, you're, you're, you're anyone that's on my live stream, anyone from my videos, you're more than welcome to come round, chill in the workshop, we'll do a few repairs together. You can sit here, you can sit here in my chair and I'll go, like walk you through a repair. Yeah, by all means, that would be fantastic. So this is a successful motherfucking repair. Booyah! In your face! Hey, try 4080 chip bullshit thing. Right. Right, so after every repair, we do a bench test to make sure that it is fully repaired, it does its rated power, and then I do an endurance test to make sure that it can run for 45 minutes playing a hard uh, static load along with a reactive load. And so this is the bench test part where we find out how much power this makes. Now, I know these amplifiers don't quite make their rated power, so we're probably going to get, I don't know, 13 or 1400 watts out of this at 14 volts. Um, so yeah, I'm not expecting huge things, but I'm expecting it to work and the audio wave to look good and for it not to explode. So let's see, let's uh, turn her on, give you my scope view. We should have the same DC offset on both of these. It uh, should be about 31 volts of half rail, let's see. Yeah, it looks about right, it's very noisy. Actually, we've got about two volts of DC offset. Yeah, there's about two volts of offset there. Uh, not too sure that that's particularly good. Uh, 31 volts and 34 volts. So let me take my multimeter and just confirm that. Now, these amplifiers do actually have a potentiometer inside to correct the DC offset. So I may need to adjust that potentiometer. So the potentiometer for adjusting the uh, offset is actually here. So let's power the amplifier up again. And we're going to drive 14.6 volts into this uh, high voltage just for just to start with. I'm going to go ahead and turn this just very slightly and see whether that gives it more or less. And we can see the offset on the multimeter just there. So, wow, it's quite a lot of offset there, more than two volts. So let's put that to 20. So let's try turning the thing the other way around and let's make sure that that doesn't make it worse or better. Okay, here we go, that's getting better. Okay, so this, this knob needs to be turned around this, in this direction. So let's do it again. Oh, minus 0.5, minus 0.3. Okay, there we go, that's a bit better. Okay, now these 4080 amps are naturally very noisy on the output, so don't worry if it looks really noisy, that's just because these are an old school design and that's how they work. So let's give it some power and let's see. There we go, so you can see it's pretty noisy on there. Now I'm gonna use some channel math on here to actually work out the voltage of the uh, the audio wave. We're gonna have to turn the level up quite a bit because this doesn't seem very sensitive. This amplifier. Right there we go. There's our clip point. Okay, there we go. There's our clip point. Uh, you can see there that the wave was just starting to square off a tiny bit on the top and bottom there. Now, in order to work out what voltage that actually was, I'm going to go ahead and go to Trace. And I'm going to save Trace to Memory 1. So I'm going to save this screen to the memory. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-enable the, the, uh, the traces. Go to trace, uh, trace Memory 1 on so we can see it in the background. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my oscilloscope probe. This is quite lazy, I could probably work it out from the screen, but we are looking at volts RMS here, not volts peak to peak, so it's a little bit harder to work out. So I'm going to actually take my multimeter probe here. So I'm just probing the RCA voltage here, so that's why it's so low. But I'm going to turn my probe from times 10 to times 1, so it's way more sensitive. You can see now how it's almost the same amplitude as the output wave. So if I adjust the input amplitude to match up with what's on the screen, the scope now tells me volt RMS equals 32.4 or 32.45 roughly. So that was 32 volts at clipping point there. So how much power was that? That was 32 volts and 1 ohm. 
This was at 12 volt, remember? So we did 1024 watts at uh, 12 volt 1 ohm. So if we use the square law correction factor, so the square law correction factor for 14.4 volts uh, versus 12 volts is directly 1.44. So we take one, uh, we take 1024 watts times it by 1.44 equals 1,474.56. So that's how many watts it puts out at 14.4 volts, or how many watts it would put out at 14.4 volts, and that square law correction factor is very accurate, usually within about plus or minus 20 watts. So yeah, uh, it's been compared to actual real bench tests, and it is a very accurate way of correcting your voltage drop uh, versus your clamped power output. So I'm pretty happy with that. It didn't explode, it did the power that I thought it was gonna roughly do. Uh, so cool, I had a successful repair, and I hope that you learned some things about the 4080 amplifiers, not only how to repair them, um, and what things to look for to, uh, get it back up and running but also how to check for the DC offset on the out on the speaker outputs changing the uh, potentiometer inside to make sure that you've not got any excessive DC voltage because that will blow your amplifier and possibly your speakers as well so um, yeah I hope you enjoyed if you've got any questions then drop a comment let me know and I will see you next time